think AI companies are going to be challenged in the upcoming years to figure out a way to become profitable. What's going on, guys? This is Aaron from Departures Capital, and we're here with Tim Lance, CEO of Avant Technologies. It's a pleasure to have you on today. Tim, how are you doing? Doing great, Aaron. Thanks for having me. For sure. So I'm excited to be talking about the company. Can you tell us a bit more about yourself and the company to start this off? Yeah, absolutely. So um, as you mentioned, Tim Lance, the CEO of Avant Technologies. Um, fairly uh, fairly new to the role, um, but I spent uh, a lot of my career in technology and big data, um, mostly in the healthcare sector, um, but did uh, cross over a little bit into some other areas like sports and entertainment and uh, manufacturing as well. Uh, Avant is a, a really exciting company. Um, it's a pleasure to be involved at this point. Um, the uh, company was one of the first to market back in the uh, kind of 2015, 2016 timeframe with a uh, generative AI, similar to, uh, you know, a chat GPT. And uh, as we kind of went on our AI journey, we noticed that there were a lot of headwinds facing AI companies. Um, and uh, in my prior roles, I have experienced a lot of those headwinds personally. And so uh, the company, as we've grown, has uh, chosen to shift away a little bit from kind of, you know, market facing AI and really focus on delivering a best in class turnkey infrastructure to help companies that are running AI or building AI or doing, you know, large data analytics, large data transactional processing, be able to run their businesses more efficiently, more effectively, and with a better environmental footprint. So let's talk about your recent news. The company just announced that it had has entered into a co-development agreement to create high density compute infrastructure and supercomputer network software. Can you tell us more about this and what it means for the company? Absolutely. Yeah, we're very excited about the partnership with Wired for Tech. Um, you know, as we've again kind of gone on our AI journey and, and decided to move more into the infrastructure side of life. Um, you know, that comes with obviously a lot of innovation, a lot of research and development. And we knew that we wanted a partner uh, to be able to go on that journey with us and be able to help us uh, not only, you know, lend their experience and their expertise and combine that with ours, uh, but also to be able to, you know, bring uh, our new product lines to market faster. And Wired for Health has, uh, or Wired for Tech rather, has deep experience uh, in that um, across a variety of industries and including healthcare, including, uh, you know, security and other things. And so we thought they were a great partner um, and they have that deep experience both on the infrastructure side in terms of, you know, hardware system design, uh, but also on the software development side. And so it was able to allow us to work with one partner and look holistically at, you know, our solution and where our product line is headed uh, and be able to consolidate some of that into a, you know, a single partnership for development. Sounds like a win-win. So innovation is often at the core of a successful tech company. Can you share how Avant Technology stays ahead of the curve in terms of technological advancements and innovation within your industry? Absolutely. Um, you know, I've always found that, you know, innovation really starts with a culture, right? Um, in my experience, in my career, you know, no matter how much you're doing in technology, it all starts with people. And I think at our core, um, you know, Avant is a company that was born out of innovation. Um, so one of our co-founders, our technology co-founder, who's still with us, uh, Danny Rittman, uh, you know, was doing innovation work with Intel. He was doing then innovation work with uh, IBM as they were, you know, kind of building and developing Watson, which is probably, you know, arguably the most prolific AI uh, that has been around the longest uh, in large scale commercial use. And so, you know, the company really started on his vision to build a, you know, better, smarter, uh, you know, learning AI. And we've kind of just continued on the trajectory for there and, and brought in people that are innovation oriented, um, both from a strategy as well as an execution standpoint. And, you know, even partners like Wired for Tech, right, really come from a deep place of, of innovation historically. And so, so I think it starts, first of all, with the people that we, you know, bring on and that we partner with and extend that to our company culture. And then from there, I think it's really about, you know, understanding the market. Um, you know, my son's a, a hockey player and, uh, and I play a little bit myself and Wayne Gretzky had a great quote, you know, years ago when somebody asked, you know, how he scores so many goals, he said, I don't skate to where the puck is. I skate to where I know the puck is headed. And so, you know, we really invest heavily in understanding the market and looking not just, you know, over the next six to 12 months, but really looking at trends 
that go beyond that and make sure that we're you know adjusting our trajectory and uh, what we're doing from an innovation front into where we believe the puck is headed. That's great. So, you know, let's talk a little bit about the company's signature AI technology. So Avant AI appears to be versatile with applications across various industries. Can you elaborate on how Avant AI is being utilized to address specific challenges or opportunities in different sectors? Yep, absolutely. Um, no, it's a great question. And I think, um, you know, one of the great things about Avant AI is that really it's where we started. And, you know, it's really what led us on on this journey that we've been on for the last couple of years. Um, initially, Avant AI was really focused more on kind of B2B use cases. So looking at things like how to accelerate and uh, and drive, let's say, company financial analytics. Um, and we were looking at, uh, you know, different applications of it for supporting like e-commerce businesses and startups, right? Where a company that was looking to kind of grow and scale could kind of lend itself to our AI platform and be able to you know, kind of reap the benefits of that as they brought their businesses forward. Um, when COVID hit, right, it, we shifted a little bit um, and actually did some work with Avant AI in the healthcare space, um, mostly around rapid training for diagnostics. Um, so, um, you know, that was a little bit more, I would say, of a business to consumer use case um, that we prototyped. And at one point, kind of during the peak of COVID, you know, we actually had almost a million uh, online users of Avant AI um, that were a lot of them geared towards trying to understand, you know, based on their symptoms, you know, what their diagnostic reporting was. Um, you know, today where we sit with Avant AI is we've kind of made the decision to pivot the company from commercially available AI into, you know, infrastructure on which everyone's AIs uh, can run. Uh, we've made the decision to continue to leverage Avant AI, but in a slightly different way. So we're using uh, Avant AI now and, and doing some development and refactoring work on it to help support improved data center operations um, within our infrastructure. So if you can imagine your infrastructure deployed in our data center and, you know, in, in someone else's data center, or even on premise for a customer, let's say maybe in a, you know, as part of a, a smart building, uh, which is a growing trend in construction the AI would help automate and drive, you know, management of the infrastructure in terms of proactively looking at, you know, when an error is about to occur, maybe when maintenance is about to occur, when a part is going to go down and be able to provide, you know, proactive mitigation strategies to keep uptime running and to kind of minimize maintenance costs. Um, and we're also doing some work with Avant AI now on the data security side. And if you're following the, the news in terms of the biggest investors in building AIs, you know, CrowdStrike is, is one of the big mm -hmm. AI players. Uh, I think they're in the top 10 now in terms of their investment, uh, really geared around the information security front. And we believe that to have the best in class infrastructure, uh, we also need to have, you know, best in class security. And so that's another big application that we're uh, tailoring Avant AI for now is to help with that proactive security uh, with people that are using our, our infrastructure and our hardware. So the company aims to shape how we engage and implement AI technologies globally. Can you discuss the company's global expansion strategy and any challenges or opportunities encountered in introducing AI solutions to different regions and markets? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I think from an AI standpoint, um, and you know, just as uh, kind of background, I mean, the last my last position before coming to Avant, I was the you know president and COO of a global technology company in the healthcare space. And we, we used AI, um, it was originally a European company, but we operated in kind of at our peak about 27 different countries around the world um, in several regions. Um, you know, I think AI is, is not a US phenomenon. AI is a global phenomenon. Um, and you know, where I really like the positioning of Avant from a global perspective is that the US from a sort of regulatory standpoint, I think lags some other uh, regions of the world in terms of the fervor around data protection. Um, so if you go to Europe, you know, and you look at what they've done with GDPR and how, you know, GDPR continues to get more stringent um, and you look at the, you know, structures of how they actually assess individual liability to CISOs for, you know, data security challenges. Um, I think outside of the U.S., there is a lot more demand for 
private cloud. I mean, there's a lot of demand for private cloud infrastructure in the U.S. as well. Private cloud as opposed to public, right? As opposed to AWS or Azure or Google Cloud. Um, and so we feel really strongly that there's a, you know going to be a great global expansion opportunity, and that the data security regulations in Europe, um, in the Middle East, and even in the APAC region actually support. Um, you know, a really strong business case for for how we're building the company and how we're growing it. Um, and, you know, as I talked about the headwinds, I mean, some of the headwinds in AI development are really around cost, right? How do you sort of build an AI? Because it's very expensive to build. It's very expensive to train, right? Um, it requires a tremendous amount of speed, storage, processing power, um, and, you know, legacy hardware, traditional hardware, Setups and data centers also consume, you know, a ton of energy, a ton of water, right? So you have a big environmental footprint. So I think, you know, one of the things that we're really excited about is if we can provide a better, faster, more environmentally conscious, more cost-effective solution on which to build and run AI and big data analytics, um, it's going to actually help all of those AI builders around the world to be able to you know, get their AIs up and running to be able to scale them in a cost-effective way and grow their businesses as well. So we, we really see ourselves as the enabler, right, or the supporter of the proliferation of AI and big data analytics uh, in a global sense. Uh, obviously, right now, you know, at our size, we're heavily focused on the U.S. market, which still comprises a pretty significant chunk of the market. Um, you know, if you look at AI alone in the U.S., it's a $15 billion industry just in the U.S. right now. Um, you know, if you start to scale AI and private cloud and look at the global market, you're talking about a market that's right now approaching 200 billion uh, annually. So uh, very large market. And uh, we want to focus first on the U.S. We have, uh, you know, had had some conversations where there may be opportunistic things for, you know, like large scale proof of concepts and specific uh, areas on an international basis. So it's something that I think will remain open to in the short term if something really exciting comes along. But uh, but for now, we'll focus on the U.S. market and, um, you know, and look at global expansion opportunities a little bit further down the road. But I think the market's going to be a great one, especially in those regions I mentioned. Definitely. So looking ahead, what are the key milestones and objectives that Avant Technologies aims to achieve in the next few years? And how does the company plan to capitalize on the growing demand for AI technologies worldwide? Yeah, uh, it's a great question. So, um, you know, short term key milestones, obviously, you know, we're, you know, we're moving in a different, uh, slightly different direction from where we've been historically. Um, and so we've done an exciting uh, amount of development in, you know, recent months. And I would say for kind of our initial go to market solution uh, around our infrastructure, we're in what I would call last mile development. So obviously, the big milestone for us is to, you um, got to be able to bring our new product line to market later this year and uh, and then be able to really gather a lot of great comparative data on, you know, how clients are succeeding with us versus, you know, the traditional infrastructure that they were using in the past. Uh, and then from there, it's really about thoughtful expansion and, you know, accelerated growth. Um, we have a kind of multi-tiered go-to-market strategy. Uh, I won't get into the details on this call. Um but, uh, you know, I think there's some key segments we'll focus on. Obviously, research and education is a big one. Um, you know, private cloud uh, and kind of technology management is a big one. And then, you know, other areas where AI is really prolific, um, we'll try to focus on. So, you know, obviously, you know, smart construction, uh, especially on the commercial side of, of construction is really big and growing. And uh, also transportation logistics, um, so there's there's a handful of industry sectors that I think are leading the way on the AI front, and so you know we'll focus our efforts there, in terms of growth, and then um, as we get a little further on that route, we have some other exciting things planned, but I don't want to spoil the fun on uh, on all of that. But uh, but yeah, we've got several milestones, um, you know, both short term and intermediate term, and then we have uh, some really exciting long range plans. I would say are probably you know one and a half to to two and a half years out as we start to kind of get our infrastructure out there into the market. Well, thank you for sharing all that information. It was awesome learning about the company. I look Much forward to having you back on in the near future and best of luck with everything. Great. Thanks, Aaron. Really appreciate it.